We'll jump right in and determination of annual ryegrass. And um, again, these are these are how this is how we deal with terminating it. And uh, so we always start out with one quart of uh, Roundup. Uh, we use Power Max is what we use. Um, I know I've got listed one to two. The the one to two is you could go out with two, but um, and, and hit it with two if you wanted to. But the thing we've noticed that if you can't control one quart of Roundup, you're not going to control it with two quarts of Roundup. Um, so usually that falls back to timing. Um, so one quart of Roundup, we use one quart of two four D. Um, some people don't don't uh, think that might be a little on the high side, but what we what we found out is we do have volunteer. Um, you know, winter annuals that if you, you know with aerial application, not everything's perfect. So we're going to get those mare's tail and some other things popping late in the in the spring, and we want to we want to nuke them down as best we can. We also use four pounds of citric acid for 100 gallons of water. Obviously, there are other um, for our type of citric acids that we're using. Four pounds is recommended. Um, there are other products out there to use, but we like to use the citric acid to to lower the pH of the water. We feel we get a little better results uh, with the glyphosate. Um, and then we're using um, dry AMS at the labeled rate. Um, uh, it's real important to make sure that, and I'll, and I'll pause right here and mention this, is to get the mixing order on all of these um, ingredients right. I mean, we start out putting the dry AMS in first, and we agitate it uh, pretty well with a full tank of water. And then we put in the citric acid and then the rest of the ingredients, the Roundup and the uh, 2,4-D. And I think that's real important. So if you don't, um, if you don't get it in the right order, you can tie up some things, and it just doesn't doesn't work as well. Um, we also are only using 10 to 12 gallons of water as carrier. Um, I know guys can get away with doing 15, but we find that uh, we like those droplets a little more concentrated, and we get pretty good coverage at 10 to 12, uh, depending on the situation. Um, Want to make sure we we stress no atrazine 28 in the in the mix. It just uh, it really ends up uh, burning the leaf tissue too much before we get the glyphosate um, um, absorbed, and it, and it can create a lot of problems sometimes. Um, the other thing I put on here is is don't tank mix other herbicides. Um, there are instances um, that you can get away with it, but I, I highly recommend you don't. Just make it a two-pass situation, especially if you're going with a, a, a pre-emerge herbicide. Just just burn things down and then go back and pre-emerge them. Uh, I think I think you'll be happier in the long run and, and get better control. Um, and then of course we we talked about the proper mixing order already. <clears throat> um, timing on the spray. Um, these are some real important tips and points. I I've found that if we screw these up, we can really um, mess up our uh, or uh, control of annual ryegrass. And the most important thing is to make sure that is annual ryegrass is actively growing in the vegetative state. And um, that doesn't mean it just turns green. And I've got listed on here, when it's time to mow your yard, it's time to spray annual ryegrass. You know, our yard has turned green a little bit here now, uh, but it definitely hasn't grown any. And our annual ryegrass is starting to turn a little green out in the field right now but definitely not even close to time to spray. Um, that gets hard sometimes because everybody gets antsy in the spring and we feel we're behind. But uh, the longer you can wait, the better the better control you're going to have of ryegrass. The more patience you can have, the, the better control you're going to have of it. Um, you know, warm temps, 60s in the day and 40s at night. Um, you know, making sure um, you get good coverage with small droplets. We use flat fans, um, nozzles. Um, I know you can get AI nozzles to work if you get the pressure correct, but my biggest biggest caution is do not use flood jet nozzles. Um, that's where we see a lot of failures when guys go to those type of nozzles. Um, and then, you know, nine to three, these times are just general times. Obviously, it depends on the weather, but you want to make sure that you uh, shut down so that you got enough time for that to translocate things before the, pl the plant shuts down at night. That's the most important key. We find that if you spray closer to dark in the evening, you'll find that your control goes way down and it, it, just, it just doesn't work out very well. Um, so uh, we'll move on here. Um, 